Greetings, Metal Community. It's uh, Roger back with another uh, contest entry. Uh, well, it's not an entry, as I always say. I'm not in it to win it. I'm uh, just uh, showing my support to channels. I try to jump on as many of these as I can, but um, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time to prepare for these videos, but uh, it's cool uh, to do something different. Uh, this time it's uh, for Trevor over at the Fumes of Hatred. He reached uh, 400 subs um, yeah, a while back, a couple of months ago, probably. Um, I discovered his channel uh, early on in his uh, YouTube career and uh, followed him ever since. He has he doesn't show a lot of like collection updates like I do. He is way more inventive in his videos. He had a pretty cool uh, blue themed uh, video now. Uh, recently, that was. Uh, an awesome idea as well so uh, yeah he does some something different so that's really cool um, so yeah I just want to do this to show him support and uh, I will link up his channel below so you can go and check it out if you're uh, into it he is kind of a broad spectrum music as well as uh, a lot of us listening to all sorts of metal really so um, yeah in the background we are playing uh, Horrifier uh, Morbid Resurrection I uh, don't have a physical of it because the vinyl is set to be released in May. Uh, but I'm going to see them live, uh, hopefully at Inferno um, soon. So uh, I needed to acquaint myself with the album. It is released on CD um, of personal records and, and there's also a tape. But uh, the vinyl is coming through Duplicate soon. So yeah, but over to Travers. Um, Contest he had four questions, you know, the number is four on everything and the first one was um, resurrect four artists uh, or bands or periods of bands or uh, Some something in that way and so uh, of course uh, for me um, uh, World Dane uh, would I did never see him live so I would love to Resurrect him and, and maybe you know see him on the um, refugee denied tour tour would be fucking awesome uh, Yeah, just my favorite metal vocalist. So uh, Another one of my favorites is uh, Ronnie James Dio never got to see Dio as, as well. So uh, Just for that reason um, be able to see him. I was supposed to see him um, Back when he got sick and got the cancer uh, the the gig we were supposed to go to was first postponed and then cancelled because of it so that was kind of a a bummer uh, third one is uh, Cliff Burton uh, I think Metallica would have been way better uh, for a longer period than they were so um, I think that he was just yeah they kind of fell apart a little bit when he died so um, it would have been cool to see what would have happened uh, you know, with um, and Justice for All, maybe we would have bass on, on Justice for All and stuff like that. And uh, also another bass player, Roger Patterson from Atheist. I uh, also think another band that slightly fell apart when he passed away. Um, very skilled bass player as well. And uh, yeah, two great bass player and two great vocalists. So there's uh, four for you there. Um, second one, the list uh, one to four album uh, or pressings that you would like to have that amount to the sum of uh, 400 uh, US uh, or Euro or just amount to 400 something really. So uh, yeah, first one, I would love to get uh, a vinyl edition of this album. This is the original CD, but uh, Ripping Corpse. Dreaming with the Dead would love to have this on original vinyl. I would be very happy with a a um, repress of it as well, but or a reissue. But uh, yeah, it's the fucking killer album, and this is priced like 250 on Discogs now. So um, yeah, another one is an album that I show a lot, but I'm only lacking one pressing of this album, and that's. Uh, you know, Equinox of Widersen. I am missing the Reindeer pressing, the first pressing of the vinyl that was sort of like a underground label. This is the first pressing of the BMG. I also have the original tape and CD, and I have the uh, reissued vinyl, and I do have the the uh, reissued CD that just came. So, um, yeah, it would be very cool to have uh, that Reindeer um, edition of Equinox. 
but it's pretty expensive it's kind of um, it's around 150 euros to get one so those two should sum up to 400 if my maths are uh, winning the uh, parameters so yeah that was the second the third one is list four concept memories that stand out you know positive negative annoying whatever I I'm mainly went with positive but um, I have to talk a little bit about Motorhead I did see Motorhead uh, very late I did see them earlier on as well but um, luckily but um, the last time I saw Motorhead it was a disaster of a gig uh, really um, yeah Lemmy's voice were totally gone they played like 35 minutes of music and I had a like a 10 minute, minute long drum solo uh, so I, I think the total gig was like 45 minutes uh, fucking it was very sad to see how bad he was and uh, yeah it was kind of uh, totally let down you know the concert was not cheap at all and then to get so little back for value for your money from a, such a legendary band was just sad and um, this was kind of at the end of their live career and uh, I understand why you know he, he was not in any shape to tour anyway so but uh, luckily I did see them at Hammersmith in, in London uh, earlier on and that was a fucking killer gig so um, so I have a good and bad memories from Motorhead uh, live but um, yeah so over to the positive gigs um, I'm not a big fan of this band in general, but the first four albums are pretty good, and that's Gojira. Uh, they play live in, uh, this was 2006, Hole in the Sky in Bergen. Uh, this was kind of very early in their uh, career, so they were kind of not, they had not exploded uh, yet when it came to popularity. Um, when the gig started, you know, the venue was... Yeah, not even half full um, we had a lot of room but when they started playing uh, I just totally lost it uh, head banging mush pitting uh, all over the place uh, I used to have long hair back then so uh, and um, yeah at the end of the gig the guitarist pointed at me and said you know I know you and uh, that was awesome so uh, just a fantastic gig and one of the few gigs that I kind of just sewn totally out and uh, had a fucking killer time and they were super good live I mean the energy they uh, portrayed it on stage was just absolute fantastic the bass player was like a fucking rabbit on stage he was just all over the place <clears throat> back uh, some black metal um, the Hexen uh, I did see them at Inferno I don't remember quite a year uh excellent uh, finnish black metal if you don't know him um this is a uh, very cool special uh, edition but also uh this band started off with a kind of a ritual they gathered on front of the stage or up on stage and like had a ritual with you know candles and whatever um started playing um female bass player here she had that she was very lean back and had that smirk on his face she looked just like evil happy evil uh, one of the guitar players he was playing so aggressive on his guitar that it jumped off his uh, belt so he kind of and he couldn't get the, the belt back on the guitar so <laughs> he was struggling with that and it just fucking pure fucking energy and yeah killer gig and uh, I would love to see Behexen again live because they were absolutely evil on stage and um, yeah in, 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 in um, addition to those kind of minor incidents there but uh, yeah the female bass player also all all the way through the gig she just had that happy evil smirk on his face or her face sorry Samuel uh, did also see them in the hole in the sky I don't remember the year but it sh must have been early 2000s I think it was at least before 2010 uh, last band for the evening and they played and the audience was fucking mental uh, I, I never I, I don't think I've been to a gig in Norway where 
all of the crowd was just totally into the music and uh, what was happening. They were in top shape on stage and uh, they played and, and uh, suddenly the light came on uh, because they played way longer than they should. Uh, the um, kind of people behind the concert turned on the light to kind of message the band that, you know, uh, you're way over your time. They had to close because of the neighbors. Um, yeah, yeah, you couldn't play after one o'clock or something like that uh, in, in the in the night. So I, yeah, but they just kept playing, and and at the end of the day, uh, the um, people behind the gig just had to turn off the power. So, uh, so uh, it was kind of everybody was like, oh, lights. We thought it was part of the show, and and just kept on, and the band couldn't care less. They were so happy with the. Uh, audience and everything so uh yeah they overstayed uh, their playing time but uh, that was fucking worth it and uh one of my best uh, memories ever when it comes to a gig so that was four gigs and the last one was best four bands you have seen live like like with the best discographies and like your favorite bands in general and uh, i picked out um yeah this one black metal band here yeah i've always been a big fan of this and that's varathron from greece they play live i think it was 2019 beyond the gates and uh, they played kind of a set list from from the demos and through all all the albums fucking killer gig uh i was blown away how good they were and then good the energy was and uh, just a fantastic gig with a excellent black metal band that's you kind of one of these bands that you kind of never expect to see live and uh, then they suddenly stands in front of you and you just struck a little bit with awe and yeah I fucking loved uh, that gig as well so um, a lot of great energy and, and the band was doing a killer job on stage as well to uh, kind of uh, you know grab the the audience and, and pull them in so uh, killer stuff the next three bands are picked out because they are some of my favorite bands overall and one of them is one of my, uh, my favorite band but I saw these bands on the same stage so I can kind of um, same stage and same not same festival year but same festival so uh, and uh, that was uh, Immolation saw them uh, down on a stage where kind of like small club stage you could just reach out and touch the people on stage they were i mean the stage is like maybe 50 centimeters over the ground or even not even that much but uh yeah f a fucking awesome gig and um just just to be this was kind of when emulation were bigger so they were probably not used to play at, at that small stages and uh that was uh, back with um you know hole in the sky again they did have a lot of killer big names on this on that small stage every year so that was fucking awesome to see emulation live at that stage and then kind of because i love the small stages i don't like big stages at all so uh, another one of my absolute favorite death metal bands and uh live uh, napalm death just fucking rules um the energy they were fucking naked when they played this gig and um, but they gave it all 100% and uh, right after the gigs, you know, I uh, remember the bass player, he just sat right down on a speaker. Uh, he was so, uh, you know, he was exhausted. The whole band was exhausted. They had been on tour and, but uh, they, regardless, when they start playing, it was full throttle. Again, you know, we were kind of like just two meters from the band when they play and that's fucking awesome. So, uh. Yeah, and if you uh, haven't seen Napalm Death live, go and see them live because um, excellent energy. And last, uh, Suffocation, same deal, same stage, fucking killer. Uh, of course, this was back when um, when um, Mullen was on vocals, so we had this um, thing going on. Uh, again, fucking mental gig. Uh, you could hardly see the bass player, you only see it was kind of hair banging because uh, he you know has his ba bass standing on on the stage so um, so low um, that stage was he <laughs> if you were a little bit behind in the crowd you 
probably didn't see him at all. But um, I was all the way in the front and just fucking banged my head off and yeah, fucking killer gig again with uh, another one of my favorite death metal bands. So yeah, that was I hope uh, everything and I hope I didn't forget anything. Once again, congrats, uh, Trevor, um, for that, uh, you know, 400. I'm sure you are close to 500 now, but uh, yeah, keep on doing what you're doing. I really uh, dig your way of making videos so different from me. And uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out this channel, go and do so. I will, of course, link it up below. And um, yeah, that was all for this one. And um, thanks always for watching. Be sure.